folks here we are good evening my name is ben gage this is gage house sessions live with tonight we have a special guest all of our guests are special sean right um and also to answer your your question song sean that song is it's just a random song from uh hey you gotta mute you gotta mute that jenny tonight we have a special guest (laughs) All of our guests are special. I sound so good. But anyway, Sean, that is just from, uh, it's from YouTube's audio library. Kieran, what's going on? How you doing out in Australia? Good morning. See, I'm getting that. All right, folks, as you're just joining, I'm going to bring Jen here, uh, over here in just a moment. But uh, as you're joining, a couple quick housekeeping things. Um... One, let us know how everything looks and sounds, your eyes and our ears. Uh, Second, if you could, share the stream. That's huge. That helps us uh, a ton. And then also joining in on the comments. I'm going to be asking Jenny a bunch of questions about songwriting. We'll be watching some of her videos. Um, You guys can answer the questions too. Uh, We love to hear what you're thinking or what maybe you're inspired to think after you hear some of these things. And if you have questions about the songs, about the stream, um, about, you know, what we had for breakfast, ask away. All right. With no further ado, Jenny, welcome to the stream. How are you? Good. How about you? Hanging in there. It's Thursday, right? I get that right? I think that's right. (laughs) I've been practicing my days, a skill I didn't think I'd have to polish up on. Right? It's like back to kindergarten. (laughs) It's crazy. It's so easy to like lose track of the days. Yeah, it is. Some of my friends have just started saying happy day, whatever day. day. (laughs) Did everyone else on the stream, did you guys know it was Thursday? We're here. We're here to help. We're here for you. Absolutely. So Jenny, you are a songwriter from... West Akron. West Akron. Yeah. So I live down in the valley, kind of in the smash between Sand Run Metro Parks and Cuyahoga Valley National Park. So I live in the best spot in Ohio, basically. Yeah. That's a beautiful part of the of of Akron. I was curious why you were specifically you said West Akron, but now it makes sense because you're in such a good part of it. Makes Mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. All right. So I think we're going to jump right into it and play your first video, and then we can start talking about songwriting. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Kieran said it's Friday. That's funny because he's in Australia. Anyway, here you go, folks. We're going to play a video. Um, This first video, this one is called uh, Send You a Letter. Can you tell us a little bit? Can you set this up, Jenny? Sure. Absolutely. So I wrote this song a few years back. I actually had um, was kind of coordinating this really big event at my job, and there were some folks in from out of town, and one of the guys that was helping uh, run the events from the other organization, I was just like, this guy is amazing. Who is he? You know, and we had a few conversations, and I was completely, you know, enchanted. Um, and he left, you know, a couple days later to go back to his home state, and I was like, oh, man, what a great feeling it is to meet somebody who's so amazing, and you can't stop thinking about them. And I wanted to write a song about it, but I was like, ah, Taylor Swift already wrote Enchanted. She kind of already wrote that song. Uh, but then I was like, wait a second. I'm like me. I should try writing it from my perspective. So that's kind of what this song is about. It's just about meeting someone for the first time and just being so blown away by them and enchanted by them. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's hear it, folks. Again, this one is called Send You a Letter by Jenny Baird. <laughs>
If I mail you a postcard, would you think I'm crazy? It's not my fault that you got stuck in every corner of my brain. All I want to know is if you think of me just the same. And it was your mind. Jenny. That was an awesome song. Fantastic. Thanks. Appreciate it. It's a fun one. So how long did it take you to write that? Uh, I think that, I think I wrote the first verse and the chorus and all the music in like 30 minutes. And then I, I was like sitting on my bed and just like popped it out. And then probably a couple of weeks later I was at a coffee shop and I kind of finished up writing the lyrics of the rest of it. So oh, yeah, awesome. that one was a quick one. <laughs> So just out of curiosity, I know when I write songs, I, I use my uh, voice recorder like all the time on my phone. Do you use something like that or do you mainly use notebook or a mix? Sure. Yeah, I definitely I use my voice memos a lot on my iPhone. And it's really funny, though, because even if I'll like type into notes on my phone for the lyrics, a lot of times I'll do that. I'll like type all the lyrics onto my phone just because I'm faster at typing. But I feel like a song isn't fully written in my mind until I've written it on paper in a notebook. <laughs> so if I'm not writing in a notebook already, my final step is always I have to write down all the lyrics and all the chords and everything in a, on paper. And then it feels complete. <laughs> I love that. Do you have a what key was that song in? You know oh, that? my gosh. Um, I think it's in the key of G sharp because I have a capo on. Oh, so. <laughs> uh, I get it. The world of capos. Do you have a key that is your favorite to sing in? Um, probably E flat. I feel like is usually really a good key. E um, E flat. If I'm singing like a song by a girl, mm -hmm. if I'm singing a song that's originally by a guy, a lot of times B is like the 
parallel key that works the best in a female voice for my female voice. So. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I didn't think like that. What about any songwriters that are uh, listening? Any musicians? I see some in the chat. Um, what about you? Do you guys have a, a favorite key? Or you just have to let us know. And also, um, every time we're always curious if you can guess where these videos were taken. So I put, a, I put a message in the chat, but if anyone has a guess, let us know. And Daniel, you can't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not fair. All right, so we also have, um, for everyone, if anyone's new to the channel, um, what we do is, for these events, we also share out uh, a Google Form link, and that link takes you to a spot where you can ask questions directly to the artist. Um, sometimes we can't get all the questions that are in the chat. Uh, sometimes we can. Uh, I think tonight we'll be able to handle it, but uh, try and swamp us. But the other thing with the form is everyone that submits a question, they get put into a drawing, and we'll do that drawing at the end of each month. So the end of April's coming up soon. Um, we really only have one more guest this month, next Thursday, so watch that Google form and you'll use it. Um, so we're going over to the Google form now, Jenny, and our first question before we play the next video is uh, what's the most interesting venue you've ever played? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I feel like, like most artists, I have horror stories from the road, so to speak. <laughs> Um, one, one of my favorite stories that just makes me laugh so much is I was playing a nice acoustic gig with one of my friends. She was singing backup vocals. We were playing guitar and piano and I was playing at, um, I think it was Sully's Irish pub in Medina and great, great venue, beautiful, beautiful space. And they had us on this little stage next to the front door. And the funny part was, was that it was a nice summer evening and the front door, right across from the front door, across the street was this, like this music, this blank lot. And that night there was a Kiss cover band playing <laughs> all this loud music and it, the, the pub was packed. So the door kept opening and closing. Every time the door would open, you would just hear this <sighs> and it was completely covering our nice little female harmonies music. And I was just like, I'm never gonna forget this. This is like such a crazy thing. <laughs> And so just that was hysterical, the way that um, we were trying to battle out, battle it out with a Kiss cover band. And then, you know, later in the evening, I decided to play a Taylor Swift song because I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. And it was, uh, I think I was going to play You Belong With Me because it was that long ago. Um, and there was all these like, I don't know, I think they were like college guys and they were getting, you know, getting on into the evening. So they were getting a little drunk. I was like... I'm going to play this song and every single one of them is going to sing along. And so I started playing the song and they're like, yeah. And they all start like screaming the chorus. You belong with me. I was like, yes, this is my favorite moment. That <laughs> so awesome. yeah, that was a pretty fun venue. That's pretty great. You know, I need to, I need to delve into some Taylor Swift. I'm not super familiar with her catalog. You have a favorite, yeah. an absolute favorite one? You said that one was at the time. Has that changed? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a fun song, but dang, she has such a big um, catalog of music. I think one of my favorite songs by her right now is Clean. Um, it's off of her 1989 album. Um, and that's the one that goes, uh, The rain came pouring down when I was drowning. And that's when I could finally breathe. It's just a phenomenal song. I think she co-wrote it with Imogen Heap. So, yeah, oh, it's pretty fantastic. I love Imogen Heap. Cool. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. All right. Well, that question was from Taylor Lamborn. Taylor Lamborn, thank you so much. We'll see if you get entered into our drawing. It's going to be some cool stuff. Very exciting. All right. So we can go ahead and... Well, let's, let's see you here real fast. We had some guesses. Let's look at some of these guesses. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Michelle Gage, that's my mom. What's up, mom? She says a park. Fantastic. Great guess. Uh, Michelle, the ledges. It's not the ledges. Jackie said the Cyberling nature realm. Basically. However, we're in a specific spot of said realm. True. 
I don't want to just, that's too, that's too easy. We got to make it hard. Where are we specifically? Right? I, that's fair, Jenny. It's iconic yeah. enough. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. iconic enough. I think they could, should keep guessing. So, Jackie, you're so close. Hurry up. Where do you think in the nature realm that it is? Um, it's here. And then Daniel Rylander said, young kids cover band equals smell like teen spirit over and over and over. Nice. I don't mind that song. All right, so uh, the next tune that we're going to play is called Go Now. Tell us about it. Sure. Um, yeah, so I wrote Go Now. I think I actually wrote it at the same in the same like writing spree that I wrote Send You a Letter. Um, Go Now is about probably how long ago was it now? I think it was six years ago. I decided to try to get out of Akron <laughs> and I moved, ended up moving down to the Carolinas for a, a few months. Um, but that song was all about my journey of kind of making the decision to kind of leave the nest for the first time and take a, take a leap of faith to try to, um, pursue something new. So that was kind of my first attempt at going somewhere else to do music. And yeah, so that song is all about my process of getting up the courage to move there, taking the leap of actually packing up my car and moving down there. And then I was there for about seven months and I had an opportunity to come back to Akron. And it was totally just like, it felt like the right thing at the right time. So I took a leap of faith again and came back to Akron. So that song I started writing while I was in the Carolinas. And then I think I finished it once I was actually back in Akron. So it was just kind of that process of deciding, am I going to just stay safe and do the safe thing or am I going to take the risk? So that's kind of what that song is about. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, let's hear it. This one is Go Now by Jenny Baird. <laughs> Started with New York City and all the bright lights. It almost ended there as the fears came rushing in with the night sky. But dreams don't hide that easily, and suddenly mine came up screaming, "Go now before it's too late." Tears came rushing in with the daylit clouds, but dreams don't drown that easily, and suddenly mine came up screaming, go now. The girl from Ohio with the Arizona veins Felt the world start to shift, felt the compass start to change And all those dreams who thought they'd come true In the big city suddenly knew That the North Star was singing a tune Come up from, come up from the blue ridge Home is where, home is where your roots is Come up from from the blue ridge, home is where, home is where your roots is. So go now before it's too late. Get out with your head on straight. Go now while you still got faith. Go now, it'll never be safe. Oh, 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 oh. 
started with New York City and all the bright lights. Oh man, I love that song. So while, we, while you guys were listening, Jenny and I were talking about North Carolina, um, some of our favorite spots. You said that you used to live where, Jenny? I, when I moved down there, I lived in Rock Hill, which is just in the, it's kind of in the Charlotte area, but it is in South Carolina, right below the border. So yeah, it was just kind of a nice, it's kind of like Akron, but it's a little more sprawling because it's a Southern town, but oh, so fantastic. It was two, two hours from the mountains and like three and a half hours from the beach in Charleston. So just ideal. I will move back someday. <laughs> so cool. Have you lived in other spots then? Besides? I actually, yeah, I actually grew up out in Arizona. That's where I was born and raised. Oh, wow. So yeah, there's actually a line in the song that says the girl from Ohio with the Arizona veins. And that's like my tribute to that. I grew up out in Arizona. Um, so yeah, I lived out in Arizona until I was 15. Then my family moved back here to Ohio. And then in college, I got to live on Martha's Vineyard for a semester in Cape Cod. Yeah. And so I got to live there and just do music for an entire semester, like record, perform, and songwrite. That's all I did. It was incredible. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. How'd you, how'd you get that gig? Um, there's like a program for, I went to a private, a Christian college. So there's like a program for different colleges um, called Best Semester. And there's like a Uganda studies and a journalism studies and a Hollywood film studies and a music studies. So I, I did the music studies in Martha's Vineyard and it's fantastic. I kind of just got to learn about the industry and record a bunch of songs and perform every week. So it was awesome. Plus Martha's Vineyard is just like the coolest island. It's so old. All the trees are so creepy. So it's fantastic. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I've never been there. Only seen pictures. It looks super cool. Yeah. And I was there in the winter. So it was like, there was no one there. And wow. so it was pretty fun to like be there when there weren't tourists. You'd like, yeah, it was cool. I feel it. Tourists are the worst. Totally. Anyone, anyone that's listening, have you guys been to Martha's Vineyard? Thoughts? Um, and let's see, we've got some more guesses. Ralph, I mean, kind of, you got to be more specific here. This is a, uh, this is a neck-to-neck -neck battle between you and Jackie Rylander, so I need the very specific spot that it is. What trail is it on? I think that's what they should tell us, because you have to a take trail. a certain trail to get there. Oh, wow. Jackie, uh, Jenny's making it even that much harder. All right. <laughs> the gauntlet has been dropped. All right, we have another question from our form. Um, as a writer, do you find that this lockdown has motivated you or stunted your creativity? So heavy. Yeah, um, I would definitely say both. So because I have so much time, I'm like, I want to be writing. I want to come out of this with a bunch of songs and like have this amazing creative time. And at the same time, I think that this whole lockdown shutdown, all the shutdowns for everything, it's actually really um, started a grieving process for me. So I do music full time, um, uh, teaching, performing, all that stuff, like a lot of people in Akron. And of course, all of that went away when everything shut down. And so I, it was just, it's devastating, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have gone through this as well. And so having that grieving process kind of kick off, you know, at first you just feel super numb and then I felt really sad and then since then, I think it's just been up and down emotionally. Like, how well am I functioning today? Huh, well, okay, maybe I'll try to write, you know. So I think there's that desire and that motivation to want to produce art. But then there's also the reality of like, oh, I don't even know if I can like put emotions or, or words around my emotions right now. Um, so yeah, I actually was able to take a couple, a couple, few hours the last couple of days. My good friend, Sarah, she owns Victorious Inc., um, tattoo parlor in Fairlawn. And since she's not able to do tattoos right now, she kind of let me just like take a few hours in her studio the last couple of days just to write. So I wrote a couple songs. I'll, I'll figure out if I like them tomorrow, but yeah. So I guess that's, that's kind of the long answer. Yes. And yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I can chime in a little bit on that same question. I just think that, uh, 
it's it's a crazy it's just a crazy feeling um i think we're all dealing with it i don't know it can sound somewhat dramatic sometimes but i think that uh it's something that we should acknowledge how how is everyone on the stream how are you guys feeling you guys feel like you're more creative less creative um do you feel like you're inspired or motivated to do things or do you feel the opposite uh very curious so it is what it is um it's cool that we're getting through it together and it's cool that we have amazing songwriters like jenny who uh oh. hanging out with us and letting us uh listen to some good music kind of get away from it for a little bit yeah um, and ben, thanks for hosting ben this is like so 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 cool i love it yeah of course um, and also for everyone listening, if there's anyone else that you'd like to see on this, if uh, you have an artist or, um, you know, a favorite musician around locally that you'd like to hear some of their songs um, recorded during this time. So that's one thing with every video that you're going to see on, on Live With is, is uh, recorded during um, this, whatever, whatever you decide that this can be called. Uh, pandemic, uh, a quarantine, what, what not. But um, yeah, so if there's anyone that you'd like to see on this show, let us know and we'll reach out. We'll try our best. Um, we'll do some sweet talking. Um, all right. We had a couple more guesses. Ralph said Cherry. Is that right? Cherry Lane? Yep. And then yeah, I think Virginia Virginia said, it, said it the best. Cherry Lane and Firewood Trail at the Echo Pond. Perfect. Jenny, how did I know? <laughs> Once he's in here, it's game over with knowing these trails. Nicely done. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So we have one more tune. But before we get to that, um, we like to do a little segment in the show, if you will. It's kind of like a shout out for, uh, for anyone that's doing some cool stuff during this time or uh, a place that you miss the most or any, anything along those lines. Do you have... Any shout outs you want to give the community some love? Yes, for sure. So I've been, you know, seeing different friends and different companies doing things on Facebook and just a couple of people that I've seen doing really cool things. Um, Valley Cafe in Wadsworth, they are still open for takeout. Um, so they're doing takeout from their Valley Cafe and some, some of the sales for Dolce at the Strand, which is gelato. But I just saw something really cool that they did the other day for their employees. Um, they... They, ma they made and bagged up like probably 50 family meals and just let their employees come pick up the meals and take them home. And I just was like, that's amazing. What a cool way to build community with their employees while they are, you know, not able to engage in their jobs and in their company the same way as they usually do. So I just loved that. And then um, been watching my friend Ashika Street on Facebook and she has started a project, So United, S-E-W, United, and she and some other moms in the Akron area are making face masks for frontline workers. So I just thought, wow, that's amazing. So she's selling face masks to all of us, but also providing them for frontline workers. And I think her website is project, so, S -E -W, United com. So yeah, just some really cool things happening. Um, just love seeing how we can so easily take our connections for granted, but then when something like this happens and we have to be physically separated, just watching people step up and, you know, bring us opportunities for community in creative ways. It's just, I just love it. It's brilliant. Man. Yeah, those are super cool. Uh, Jenny, real fast, you said that you teach. Um, could you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that? Sure, yeah. So I actually have pivoted and changed all of my lessons to virtual lessons on Zoom. So I teach piano and songwriting and voice lessons, as well as I've actually started doing some group lessons on Zoom too. So um, I think I just finished up a rock star camp last week. I had six girls that joined in ages, probably like freshmen in high school to, you know, kindergarten. And yeah, I was just able to kind of teach them about performing and let them each choose a song to learn. And then at the end, I kind of had them celebrate each other and which was so cool. I was like, oh my gosh, I have this opportunity to like, not just teach these girls music, but teach them how to celebrate each other instead of compete with each other. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of online lessons and I'm, you know, taking students for that and 
just I'm passionate about um, coaching kids and adults, anyone, not only in music, but in their calling as artists, you know, and encouraging people in their calling as artists. So awesome. Anyone out there that needs some voice lessons? Hit me up. Hey, Ralph, <laughs> Ralph, you need some voice lessons, man? No, I don't think that you do. <laughs> Ralph, but Jenny, good. Jenny, maybe you should think about Ralph. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll say uh, as <laughs> All right, folks, you guys ready for the last tune? Uh, this last one's called Bullets Fly. Jenny, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, this song, I this song took me probably th at least three years to write. It was really, really tough to write all the lyrics to it. Um, so I wrote the very first verse kind of just in a in a shot. It came out without thinking about it really, and kind of inspired by a friend of mine who, after she had her first child, was just dealing with a lot of you know mental health stuff and kind of realized that a lot of what she was dealing with was based on pain and wounds that had come from her childhood. And it just really struck me that all of us, pretty much from the minute we come out of the womb, you know, we're wounded and we live in a war zone and we all get wounded um, from the minute that we're born. And we spend the rest of our lives being defined by our wounds, whether we decide to face them and get healing from them or whether we decide to try to run away from them and then become bitter and frustrated. And so this song is just kind of my way of processing the way that we can be, the way that we can interact with our wounds. So it's a little bit of a sad one, but then, I don't know, I guess there's hope in the last verse that, you know, if we can face up to our wounds and heal from them, we can still have a beautiful life. So it's kind of what the song is about. I love that. That's beautiful, and uh, and I will say I'm a sucker for a sad song. I love sad yeah. songs. Sad um, songs forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, actually, Jenny did that song. Uh, the if you go to the Gage House Sessions YouTube page, you can see a few songs that Jenny did at Gage House Session Six, and um, yeah. that was one of them. I loved it. But I just wanted to draw before we play this uh, play this video. Draw attention. There's a really cool moment in this song where this cardinal um, perched on. It was pretty close to us, but even more so, we were making a lot of noise. It perched yeah. on the, the bench, and it just sat there for a little bit and listened. Um, it's really cool. And Jeff, what's up, man? Jeff Clem says hello. What's up, Jeff? How's it going? All right, folks, here we go. <laughs> this is the last tune from Jenny Baird. It's called Bullets Fly. Um, if you have any questions for Jenny, drop them in the chat now while this song is playing. And we'll get to as many as we can. Thank you. And here we go. We were born with the bullets flying. We were born to put up a fight. It's a war as soon as our lungs fill with air. It's no wonder our cries are the first thing they hear Even the best in the room hold their heads, hold their wounds And all of the hopes draining out of their eyes mm.
Will we grow old, broken and tied to the wounds we scorned and denied? Is it war we fallen in love with not like? Will we find out there's a wonder still filling the skies? And all the stars find their voice in the deepest of nights. Their song of eternity echoes inside. song absolutely love that jenny thank you appreciate that did you guys see the birdie that was chilling on the bench that was so cool too even after he flew he just went into the uh the tree right there it's pretty awesome all right so our last question from our our google form is what's your favorite stage in the songwriting process writing recording promoting or performing and again, I just want to say a shout out to Taylor Lamborn for dropping a ton of great questions into our forum. Um, yes. We love to see the way that kind of music lovers think and the things they want to know. So anyway, Jenny, let us know. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, I think there's a saying, a quote by somebody else. Um, maybe it's Gloria Steinem. Maybe it's not. I can't remember who said it, but they said, I don't like writing. I like having written. <laughs> and so I think I like having written the song and being done with it. <laughs> Mostly because I think a lot of times while I'm writing a song, I'll feel really excited about it and feel like the creativity is flowing. And then I'll listen the next day and I'll be like, ugh, I hate that. Why did I write that? It's no good. And so, but when I've written a song that I love, that I know is a good song, it makes me want to play it over and over. Um, just like when I hear a good song on the radio and I want to hit repeat, if I've written a song that I know is good, then I just want to play it over and over. So I love, love, love that moment where I've finally like met with inspiration and written a good song. And then it just makes me want to play it over. Because I feel like as creators, we don't ever really create alone. We're in collaboration um, and with inspiration, you know. And so I love when you feel like inspiration and you held hands and wrote a good song. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then of course, if there's a song that I love that I've written, performing and having other people fall in love with it is absolutely the most magical thing in the world. So there's been a couple songs, um, one, like one of the songs off of my very first albums, I never ever play it anymore. And I played a house show probably in this almost a year ago and I finished up the show and um, it was just a small group and they were like, play another song. I was like, sure, tell me what you want me to play. And they're like, play that one song from your album, Heartstrings. And I was like, oh, that's a blast from the past, sure. But it was just so exciting to me that a song that I wrote that I pretty much forgot about, someone else was like, I love that song still seven years later, you know? So that was kind of a roundabout answer, but. No, that's so cool. And it's true, when someone takes the time to actually learn one of your tunes, um, it's a pretty, Pretty incredible feeling. Yeah, really yeah, incredible. Yeah, it's so true. So where can folks find more of you? Or do you have anything, I know it's kind of weird right now, anything to announce, I don't know, the shows are all canceled, but where can yeah. folks find more of you? And is, uh, is there anything cool coming up? Yeah, definitely. So you guys can find me. I'm most active on Instagram and Facebook. So Instagram is just at Jenny Baird Music, same as my Venmo and PayPal, just Jenny Baird Music. Um, Facebook, if you do facebook.com slash Jenny Baird, the girl, you'll find you, or you can just search my name, just friend me. I do all my, I do some live streaming, um, just, you know, using Facebook's app, um, from my living room. So tomorrow night I'll be going live at seven. And then I started, um, just this past week doing some Tuesday streams. So Tuesdays at four 30, I go live and I just play a few songs and starting this coming Tuesday, I'm going to start, um, eating a taco. So three tunes and one taco. Um, so if you guys have <laughs> recommendations, yeah. So if you have recommendations of tacos for me to try that like from local places that are still doing takeout, 
I'm accepting recommendations and I'll be playing a few tunes and eating a taco on Tuesdays at 4.30. So yeah, if you want to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram, I go live on both of those sites just because I feel like music and art is so important right now. And it's just a way for us all to connect just like Ben is doing these on Thursday nights. Um, so just trying to, you know, create opportunities and spaces for people to get some reprieve from coronavirus. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I think that's huge. And it's kind of our job as musicians. Um, we have to, I don't know, be on the front lines of the emotional attack. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think that we, uh, as creators, and I, I know I, I'm seeing some of the names here, like we have some amazing musicians, artists, um, just makers in general on the uh, joining us tonight. And, and we feel it. We feel it maybe a little harder than people expect us to. Um, and because we feel it a little bit harder, uh, it's kind of our job to you know, collect the stories Make make some anchors in this time so that we can come back and reflect, but then also uh, have little pockets of safety that we can share with the people that we love the most. And I think music provides a, a nice pocket of safety. So it's awesome that you're streaming. Um, definitely check out uh, Jenny Baird. Um, if you f- if you feel it in you, uh, if the if it moves you so, um, we do have some digital tip jars. Venmo at Jenny Baird Music, paypal.me slash Jenny Baird Music. Um, we know the times are a little bit weird right now for a lot of people, but if you can help support and keep music alive, we appreciate it. Um, but we're going to be doing these uh, every Thursday um, at 8 p.m. for now. Um, down the line, we might change the schedule, but we'll let you know way ahead of time. Um, so next week, we have um, Hayden Brook. He's, he's a fella from... Uh, the Youngstown area, a fantastic songwriter. Um, So he's going to be coming through. He's actually going to be doing the videos himself. So let's see what Hayden's got. Um, Looking forward to it. He's he's a really cool guy. Um, If you liked what you heard tonight, please, again, follow Jenny Baird. And then you can also follow Gage House Sessions um, on Facebook.com slash Gage House Sessions. This is where most of this content lives. You can also go to YouTube, um, and you can go to my website, excuse me, uh, bengagemusic.com. And that's where you can find more about Gage House Sessions. You can also find more about streaming. Um, I stream every Monday and Thursday um, at 8 p.m. If you want to see anything different, if you liked what you saw, didn't like what you saw, um, any feedback that you have for us and for this show is huge. Um, We will listen. This is something that we're doing for everyone. It's not a selfish act. We want to make sure that you have a a place that you can come and and enjoy yourselves. So let us help you by telling us what you want. Um, But again, please tell your friends, follow. Um, A shout out to Daniel Rylander. He's helping me produce the show, and I couldn't do it without him. Um, One last shout out, Jenny Baird. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Thank you. Any parting words of wisdom putting you on the spot? Oh, I just, I echo everything you said. Just if we just keep coming together and sharing music and sharing hope with each other, that's, that's all we can do right now, you know? So. Totally agree. Uh, From everyone here at Gage House Sessions, from Jenny Baird, um, and just from the music community in general, we love you so much. Thank you so much for spending some of your evening with us. We'll be back on Monday at 8 p.m. And that's going to be myself and Matt Dunkelberger playing some tunes. Again, follow Jenny Baird. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Uh, reach out if you need anything. We love you so much. Uh, have a fantastic night. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>